today we're gonna go and look into sports. Of course, this is uh, something of interest for a large number of people around the world. There are all kinds of sports uh, here in the United States. Good news, or the bad news, depending on your viewpoint, is that artificial intelligence has been making a difference in this field and is going to have a more relevant impact in the sport as an entertainment event and industry in various ways. We also take a little trip into a very interesting country where I spent part of my life. And so we go to Israel, a country that has a lot of AI startups. And we're going to talk with uh, Gal Oz, who is the CTO and also co-founder of Pixelot. But he, he also started a number of other startups in this area of uh, AI and sport. So uh, Gal, how are you today? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you for inviting me. So I'd like to start looking at uh, your entrepreneurial experience. What do you think are the success factor for a tech entrepreneur? I would say that uh, you need to be good at, at something. Some people come to the inter entrepreneur world from the tech side, it can be from the product side, it can be from the business side, but uh, whatever your side you came from, you need to be good at. You need to trust your opinion, you need to uh, listen to others, but eventually know how to take decisions. But it's also important to know the limits of your knowledge. So uh, in, in my companies, uh, because we come from the technology side, we always took a manager to, to lead the company as a CEO once the company had uh, a solid product. So you know you need to know to lead, but also need to know when it's time for others to lead. So that means that you already have revenue, basically. You have already a customer base and a proof of product market fit. That's, that's a moment in your, in your opinion, or it's before that moment. Even before we, we start getting real revenues, maybe when we start having our first client and when we feel that we are focused on, on, the, on the market, uh, on, the, on the product. Although in, in, in Pixelot, we had a dramatic change in the first year. I mean, we built the first product that was designed to one market. Uh, eventually, after uh, around a year, we switched to a different product and different market. And this is what we are doing today. And this was already in the process of having a CEO in the company. I have a kind of a provocative question. Is it possible to start without money? The short answer is yes. I mean, you, you can start without money. Definitely, it make it harder. But if you have a good story, a good charisma, a good reputation, you can find the right person that will give you money. You don't need much money to start. We are not talking about silicon conductor companies that, or, or, or medical companies that uh, you need fortune to start. In the AI business, it's really you and the computer and some uh, few people to help you. You need to lower the risk for the people that own the money in order to uh, make this money take you less of your equity. So in this case, if you have your own money, you can start building something and go with something that's already working or, or have few clients, then definitely will be better for you. Why is AI relevant, generally speaking, in sport today? You use AI to solve issues that previously you solved it with other way and now uh, AI make it uh, easier to, to work and give more option. But uh, AI is not the objective. The objective is to solve problems. And what are the problems in sport? One area is, is how to make sport healthier, how to make the atlas better. And this can be achieved with training more, but also can be achieved with more technology and, and specifically uh, AI can uh, track the limb, AI can track their uh, speeds uh, throughout the training or the game. And uh, with this, you can improve them, you can protect them. Today you have a measure to early warning of uh, injuries. You have measure of give the exact uh, fatigue of each athlete during the game and to see who is the one that is now more tired or not. This is from the, the data side. You now even have uh, companies that are doing an analytic on the tactical. What is the right formation now to go against another the opponent? Also, the, the, the TV side that we, we are focused now in, in Pixelot is an area where AI brings a lot because it open and democratizes the sport. Because at the past, in order to, to give a TV experience for the sport, you had to bring a big Obi-Wan or big, spend a lot of money. AI give you ability to do a low cost production and give the ability to show the same TV experience from a young kid that's playing baseball in, the, in, in the 10 years old 
to a professional league uh, that's playing in Europe or whatever. So which ones of this market, if you like, is more mature? There, it's been around for, for years. Which one is more emerging? Uh, data gathering, I think, is a quite mature area. My first company, SportView, were leading this market since 2009, something like this. Uh, it was in the NBA already. It was in the, in the Champions League. And I think it's quite mature. Still, you see a, a few new companies in this area that they use more, uh, utilize more the AI and not the classic computer vision method. And that's why they give a higher uh, quality. But the technology itself and the usage of the technology is quite mature. So this is the, the pure tracking or the, the pure uh, analytic data. Understanding the, the game and understanding the tactic, understanding what you can get out of this data, it's more emerging. And people still now do a lot of uh, research on the data itself in order to uh, extract the information out of it. In the TV production, I think that the production itself is getting more and more uh, mature before the corona time. We produced uh, close to 100,000 hours of live content in a month, and it shows how mature is this solution. Still, there is a lot to grow there in terms of public or the potential, but the technology itself is very mature. The, the, the part that is emerging is the personalization of the data, of the video. So now if I want to generate a personalization in fully automatic way uh, without a human in the loop, uh, this is something that emerged and, and uh, we're already doing it for basketball that we can extract it automatically, but there is a lot of work in order to do it automatically for every sport. And this is something that we are working on. How big are these markets? Every entrepreneur that you ask how big, it, he will tell you, hey, it's $20 billion. We, we measure the number of official events that are around the world in a year. And officially, it's the only thing that are registered in a league or, or not, not uh, just friends playing, but something that is registered. So there are more than 250 million events per year. There are more than 150 uh, million uh, athletes that are registered in some kind of an organization around the world. And the traditional solution that the, you have for every part of the problems we mentioned cover less than 1% of these events and give information on about one, less than 1% of these athletes. So it means that if you have uh, in Germany around 20,000 teams playing soccer, you have uh, 20 teams that are in the Bundesliga and these teams are being, have the, the super uh, coverage. But what happened with all the rest? So the potential is huge. It's almost infinite. Let's look first at the company that you did for the data analytics. How it looks like the product and, and the, who are the people that buy this product? So the basic product of uh, SportView was, uh, and it still is, it's, uh, it's still functional and working, uh, not under, under the stats, which is the company that purchased Pixelot. A pair of cameras that cover the field from the side and, and you have a coverage of each pixel of, of the frame of the field and by computer vision and later AI, what we do, we follow every object and make sure we save this tracking throughout the game. And we know individually each layer where it was, we captured the, the ball and out of this data, we can extract the basic as distance running and speed and acceleration, things like that. And the more advanced is a question like in basketball, what is the percentage of the of, of three-point shot relative to the distance of the guard from you? So, so the question becomes so many that you don't need really know what to ask. And then you can start to use AI in order to ask the right question. This is the main, the main product. You use it for teams that want to improve their uh, athlete performance or athletic performance, teams that want to monitor the, the tactical formation and things like that. It's uh, used by leagues that want to uh, share uh, some common uh, level of tact tactical data between the teams. It's used by broadcasters that want to enhance the broadcasting. Uh, and it's used by uh, data companies like Stats and Spotradars and others that, that sell data of sports to other entities. Who is really, if you like, the most interested or the... First one that you would go to is, is the sport team, is the league, is the data company, or is, or is the best uh, I mean, the best is to go to a league because then you close a league, you don't need to handle 
each team separately, and, and this is, I think, the, the main objective. But a league is complicated. A league has many strings that pull it to, to different direction, and it's very hard to capture a league. Sometimes the way to capture his league, a league is going through the teams. So, for example, in the NBA, what we did is we start going to the league. The league had a lot of issues and we didn't manage to, to break in. So what we did, we let go to a team by team. So the first year we had uh, five teams. Second year we had uh, 10 teams. And the third year we had uh, 15 teams. And then it was already a big mass that the league could not say no and sign the contract with the sport team. Okay, is there a difference between the technologies used to get the basic statistics and then the one that is used to answer more questions? How the technology works in this case? Yeah, so, so I think it's quite different technologies. The technology that is used for gathering the, the tactical data, is it started with computer vision, classic computer vision, transformed to a more AI base, but still in the AI, in the, in the deep learning uh, area of video and, and pictures, in order to do tracking, in order to do identification, in order to do uh, estimation, pose estimation, and things like that. But once you have the data, you are going more to the area of statistics and big data environment, and then it might be closer to analyze uh, huge logs than closer to, uh, to analyze video, because at the end, it's a lot of data that you need to extract information out of it. One of the things we did, we tried to make this data more available, and companies become an expert of analyzing this data. In MIT, there is a Sloan conference once a year that is dealing with sports analytics, and this conference become quite addicted to the sport view data because it was a unique data that they can build layers of information, a layer of research on top of it. And a few companies that are now successful started by using the spot view data and analyze the more higher level of analytic out of it. What is the complexities added by, you know, labeling, data labeling in a situation where you have so many sports, so many games to this type of product? And how do you measure quality over time? We are dealing with many different sports and every sport is different. But worse than this, we are, for the same sport, we have so many different level of sport. If we're talking about soccer, it can be kids playing on a small field and it can be FC Barcelona that we have a partner a partnership with them and they use in our system. So you can imagine how different it looks between those two. Of course, the, the basic thing is to have enough samples for different kinds of sports, but also I think it's very important in the production area, put uh, some uh, tools in order to measure quality in a production, not only by testing, but in the production area itself. And, and also it's important to go to the basic and listen and hear your client. Can we frame the problem that you're trying to solve? Like give, give it a, an idea. You already talked about it a little bit before, but can yeah. you give an idea of this problem? How big it is, what it is? The, the idea at Pixelot is to give television service or television effect to, to uh, every game that is being played around the globe. It doesn't need to be high end. It doesn't need to be a very expensive production, but still we want to give a TV-like feeling to their fans and to their parents and to their kids. So we built a very a fully automatic and a low-cost solution that cover the playing field and automatically create a TV-like footage, a highlight of the game, a graphic that, that, that describes uh, the action, and everything is being done fully automatically from the capturing side, processing and delivery to the client. So this is in, in, in a very big overview of the company. During the year, we also get into data aspect, but still data that is more relevant to the TV. So in order, in order to make personalization, you need to, to have data of, of the game. Also, we got into the coaching side. So now we have our clients are the big uh, soccer clubs in Europe. If you're taking Barcelona, of course, Bayern Munich and other big uh, teams in Europe, for every type of sport, we have a solution that covers the video side of it. Who are really the customer that buy this service? One thing we decided as a company is that we, we want to grow fast. And in order to grow fast, you need to grow together with partners, not uh, go now at chasing a, a, a team by team or not to go at chasing a, a client by client. So we build up a network of clients, of partners that are, each one has its own business around the, the globe. Uh, these are the optimals for us because they have the access to hundreds or thousands of venues and we have the technology to help them grow. What are the characteristics of the partner that makes 
you know, it appealing for you and appealing for them? It's a good question because uh, during the time we had few very promising deals that at the end nothing was generated out of it. Eventually we learned that the partner wasn't the right partner. Usually we are the one that's going to spend his money. So we need to understand how he is going to make money out of it. He is going to charge the teams. He's going to charge the parents. He's going to bring sponsorship. So I think it's important to understand also his size of the story. Usually we don't start with the huge deals. We start with small deals, see how it grows with it, and then try to grow faster with him. And also we spend a lot of time on customer success. So we help him as much as possible and we don't be very stubborn about how the business starts. If we need to change the model of the pricing model, if we need to change it to add technical stuff that will help him grow, we will go with him. And, and I think this is very important for the client and this is why many clients stay with us because they know that if they go with us, we go with them. When we look at the product again, what is the end result? Is it just a full match or it's a summary of the match? The best result for us is when someone watch the game and complain about the level of the players, complain about the commentator is boring. We are looking to give you the bread and butter of, of TV production for sports. The production with score, with graphics, with highlights, with replays, with the basic production, but fully automated and very low cost. So this means that you are also synthesizing the voice of the speaker? We still have a human commentator in the loop, but we give the ability to do it locally. We do give the ability to do it remotely. So, so you can find the talent fans of yours that want to be famous and, and make him a commentator. Usually it will not cost you a thing. What is the key part, let's say in your opinion, the, the critical part of the technology that makes all of this possible? The heart of the product is the AI capability of tracking and finding the highlights of the game. And this is where we we different from others. Doing an AI production is not just to open a wide camera and show the field. It's, it's following the action, understand the action, and, 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 and behave accordingly. On top of it, you want to highlight the important moment. People sometimes uh, just want to see the highlight of the game, so it's important to get these highlights automatically and accurately. So with that said, uh, for our audience, um, Today, we have looked in AI in sport, uh, particularly two big cases. One is measuring performances. The other one is making it much cheaper and affordable to basically video casting sport events from all kinds of sport events in every place in the world and even personalize those sport events uh, in a way that everybody can get, you know, the portion of them uh, or a synthesis of them in a way that is personalized. So extremely interesting topic. Comment below, and if you have suggestion about similar content, please reach out to me. For the time being, Gal, thank you so much. It was a great pleasure having you here. Thank you very much.